Hi, my name is Masha, I'm the Coding Blonde, and today I want to talk about CSS, which is essential if you'd like to add some design to your website. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Let's explain this name going backwards. Style sheets refers to a collection of stylistic rules. So for example, this is going to be red, this is going to be blue, this is going to be that font, and this is going to be that size. And Cascading points out that some of the rules will overwrite each other, depending on the importance of the document. So there's a hierarchy there. CSS helps you add style to your HTML code. And in my old blog post, I compared HTML to a builder who creates building blocks for websites. And I said that it does design like a bachelor because HTML is quite limited in what it can do in terms of design. And this is where CSS comes in. In the same blog series, I compared CSS to an interior designer who worked very closely with HTML. In reality, it basically works this way. HTML creates structure for the page, basically putting different blocks of content on the page, and CSS makes it look good by selecting the different content holders and applying style to it. And it can take a page from looking like this, and you can see the different types of content here, to this. I know this is not the most uh, incredible design, but it's much better than it was, right? CSS can be written within the HTML document or outside of it. As long as it's properly linked and as long as the program that will be reading your code, in many cases it's the browser, will be able to read that. Remember we created an HTML document with some elements on it? If you don't remember it, you can watch the video later, the link will be here. But elements are pretty simple. There are different types of content. So think headers versus paragraphs, paragraphs versus images, and so on. They're just in different types of content containers. So for example, we say that this banana is a header, we'll put it in this container. But we say that the apple is a paragraph, so we'll put it in the paragraph container, so it's a paragraph element. And then for our image element, we'll put it in this container, especially notating what is the image, what is not, how to display it, and we'll put it in the Contain. So here's our website structure. This is how HTML basically structures it. CSS applies styles to this. All right, I guess it's time for some practice. Remember how we've created this little page last time? Link will be here if you want to watch that video. Let's now add some style to it. So we open it in Sublime, text editor, or any other editor that you want to use. And now in the, in the headpiece, let's add a style, style bracket it does it for me. So basically, we tell it that it's going to be CSS in here, and we will write our CSS in here, indented. Literally, what CSS does is it selects an element and says, it will be yellow, or it will be red. So using our header example, why don't we make it red? Let's do it. So to do that, we say H1, which is the header, the biggest header in our case, and we say color, Red. Now let's save it. File, save. And when we refresh this page, there we go. So in our example, you can see that H1 is a selector. We said this is the element apply something to. This is, this is the H1 container that says whatever is in this box is uh, the biggest header. And it already has preset settings that you can then change with CSS. Here we said, this is the property that I want to edit. So for example, color, and we added a value, red. Let's add blue and see how that goes. So save, turn blue. It's pretty simple like that, but obviously there are a lot of different things that you need to remember. Um, and when selecting elements, you can select multiple elements at the same time. So, for example, let's um, select H2, H3, and P, and give them property. Again, color, that's the easiest one to see. Color, and let's say yellow. I don't like yellow, but for the purpose of this, let's go. Ha ha! And it's yellow. It looks horrible. Okay, let's go back. Maybe let's change it to red or something. So why don't we select them all? There are different types of selectors. This selector will select every single element. And again, let's add color. 
because it's the easiest one to see and say red. So when I save it and when I refresh it, so now you can see that everything except for the header um, has turned red. And the reason for the header staying blue is the fact that we specifically selected it and said, no, the header will be blue. And this is the cascading property here. We have a rule that applies to everything, but because we've written another rule that overrides that rule, it will display this way. So that one header will display this way. And there are different properties that you can define for these elements. So for example, with our universal selector, why don't we tell what font it will be? So font, family, family, Verdana. Safe. Now, see, everything changes, including the main header, the one that is still blue because we have an overruling rule for it, but this, this stays the same. Then let's, I don't know, just for the purpose of showing, let's do font size, yes, 20 pixels. Save. And now everything is the same. You see, with this, we overwrote the rules for the different types of content for different headers. So you see, these rules are cascading like a beautiful waterfall. So another thing we can do is add background color. There it is here, light blue. Save. When I refresh this, there it is, my light blue background. Another thing we can add is some interactivity already with CSS. So let's select our link, which was A, that's, that's the link element. You see it has uh, the website and what text to display. So why don't we say that on hover, it changes color. Color, yellow. No, let's say white, because we have a good background for that. Let's save it. And now, if we refresh it, on hover, it turns white, which is amazing. So here's how it works. And yes, we didn't really create a beautiful website here, but this demonstrates how CSS works and how you can play around with it and just the possibilities of what you can do. Also, we've seen how the different rules have been overwriting each other, which is great. I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good at CSS at the moment because I haven't practiced it in a while. And like I always say, it's always about practice. However, you can see that you can do some amazing things and be very creative with it. And most of the modern websites should have it. So you can see it if you inspect the page using Chrome. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that now you understand what CSS is used for or at least how it works. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. And of course, subscribe to my channel not to miss out on any new videos. Bye. I'm sure the link will be here. I'm sure it will be there. I just had an idea. A revelation it came to my mind. So it's the creative process, what can I say? It never stops. It never stops.